Yabba dabba YouTube, what's up boys and girls, it's your boy Zockstar once again coming at you with another vlog. On today's vlog, we're just going to chill out today. Um, we had a tour booked, but I just personally feel it's too dangerous to go out today. Um, I can see some waves, the, the, choppy, the choppiness of the ocean from our hotel. <clears throat> you can see the white caps out into the ocean, which is showing to me that it's going to be a bad day yesterday was just the same, uh, we got wet five minutes into the tour, wasn't a really good tour yesterday, if you watched my previous video you'll understand why, um, so today we've woken up, the wind looks like it's picked up, um, so we're going to cancel that today, um, not happy about this because when it gets, when it gets like this it should be a safety uh, issue, and yeah, I don't, I don't feel people should be allowed to go out on a day like today because it's it's dangerous. Um, but I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, we're just going to have a bit of a lazy day. We're going to maybe get on the bike, go for a ride, check out some some tour spots, uh, hoping to bring you along with us. So without any further ado, let's Scooby Doo. <laughs> see the white caps from where we are here and that's out into the ocean doesn't really show you the the full extent of the swell but believe me when you get out there we're talking swells of up to three to four meters and in a bunker boat that's not really comfortable at all so I might go down to the beach and just show you how they how they herd everyone onto these bunker boats uh, it can get quite dangerous at times the waves are crashing on the beach and uh, you're supposed to climb up into a boat holding all your gear at the same time so let's go down to the beach and have a look all right guys so i'm gonna head on down to the beach and just do a little bit of a uh, recording there a bit of people watching uh, bit of a lazy day today we might go down to nakban beach again but i'm just gonna go down and do a little bit of people watching down at the beach so come and join me Okay guys, so I'm down here at the beach now. Not as many people as there used to be here, but it's probably still early. You can see we've got a lot of demolished buildings along this side of the ocean. Well, uh, I mean along this side of the beach. Okay guys, so I'm down at the beach now, I've just come down, it's about 9 o'clock. I just want to show you a bit of the, bit of the fun times that people have on these island hopping tours. Part of that is getting on the boats. So, you can see down here, there's a gathering of people along this side, along the left side up here. Um, a lot of these buildings have been told to cut back due to uh, easement violations and you can see some buildings are actually completely gone some have been chopped back a lot of them are closed over this side you can see there's quite a few people they all wait here until they get told which boat they're going on um, a lot of these tour operators they they don't head out till like 9 30 10 o'clock some some even as late as 10 30 uh, 11 o'clock uh, we got told on two of our tours to be uh, expect a pickup of around uh, 7 30 to 8 o'clock and we didn't actually get on the boat till about 10 and we didn't leave this uh, beach till about 10.30 so just be wary of that when they say 8 o'clock pick up don't expect to be on the island by about 8.30 you have to come down here 
They normally ferry you down here in a bus or a van, maybe even a tricycle, depending on what sort of tour you have. But most of the times, this is where, you, where they're bringing you. There is another beach around uh, around this way, the Coron Coron. Um, that side's a little bit guarded from the waves. As you can see, the waves are coming on shore from this side, directly facing me, and the beach behind me, it's pretty much guarded. So this is the, the main beach. This is where the majority of the tours originate from. And if you come to our Nido, this is what you're going to expect getting on some of these boats. Bunker, they call them, the bunker boats. They're sort of a long, skinny uh, boat with uh, outriggers. You see they have these... Um, outriggers along the side that just stabilizes it from going sideways or rolling sideways but they tend to go up and down over the waves they bounce the uh they do splash um, if you have a look at this boat here it's got like a big bow um, as opposed to this one here this one's down low to the water and you can see those first row of seats when that water or when the wave crashes up up through that bow of that boat the wave literally from that bow wave comes up and if there's a little bit of wind blowing everyone gets splashed in the boat that's why i mentioned in one of my previous videos what you need to do is come down to come down to the beach here have a look at some of these boats and try and pick the larger boats. Um, I'll just show you. There's, there's an example of an extremely low boat that's low to the water. As opposed to... Um, as opposed... Where is he? As opposed to that one there. That one's a little bit higher. You do have other boats that are even much higher out of the water, but most of these boats you'll find if there's waves, if it's uh, if there's swell out in the ocean, most likely you're going to get wet. So just be wary of that. No, oh, thank you. See over here, depending on the tour that you've booked, if you're lucky, they might carry you out on a kayak to save you getting splashed in the waves. But most of the tour operators here, you're walking out to the boat. You can see there's a couple there, they're going to walk out to the boat. Another group of people here, they're walking out to the boat. Then you got people over here on the jetty. I don't know what tours they've organised, but you can actually get a tour from the jetty, and you're boarding the boats from the from the jetty port, that floating jetty port there. Even though you're on one of these kayaks, it's not the safest trying to get off one of these and climb up a ladder on the boat can be a bit of a challenge at, at, uh, sometimes. Oh, thank you. You can see there's one, one crew heading out to their boat. Uh, low tide so the boats tend to wait out a little bit further than, than usual which means you got more more of a distance to walk to get to the boat
as you can see, the boats are rocking. They're going up and down. And the ladder that's actually down in the water, it's about probably got one, maybe two steps in the water. And when your feet are a metre below that, it's hard to actually lift your leg straight up, almost waist height, and then hoist yourself up into the boat. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge. You can see there, they're probably about halfway to the boat and they're almost at waist, waist height. Everyone's got their personal belongings on their heads or holding it up high. I made a decision not to take my drone yesterday, which was a good decision because when we went out to the boats, the water was almost chest height to me. I'm six foot seven. Some of the other guys, some of the little, the smaller people, that was almost chin height. The water was up to their chins. So I'm a little bit lucky when it comes to walking out into water. But some of these people, they're drinking water while they're going out to the boat. So, bit of a challenge. Okay, there you see another group going out on the on the kayak. Sometimes you'll see it's not it's not that you're getting in the first boat that's that can be dangerous, but sometimes you need to go out past the first boat into the second boat, waiting behind the first boat. And that's what this uh, this group seem to be doing. They're going paddling out behind this boat, getting into that second boat. The water's deeper. You obviously can't walk out that far. and it can get dangerous. There's another group heading out on their, on their tour. Let's see how this one, I'll settle the camera down, get a bit of a better picture. See the boat's moving around quite rigorously there. I mean, you see that ladder almost come out of the water at times, and if you're, if it happens to hook your arm or hook you on the shoulder, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble there. You can see there, it's just swayed across. I really don't understand why they don't 
move to the alternate side when it's like this. If it's wavy on this side, it's calm on the other side. If it's wavy on the other side, it's calm on this side. So I really believe they should determine where the waves are coming from and send the boats out to that to that certain port where there's calm waters. You can see everyone's everyone's getting on the boat. It's not it's not impossible, but it's just a bit a bit ris risky. might be fun for the younger generation but we had a couple of elderly people on our boat yesterday and they struggled to get on but they they managed to get on with a with a bit of a hand from the two two guys from the ship they helped them up I mean El Nido is a beautiful place and I reckon highly recommend you come here I'm not telling you not to come here I'm just just showing you some of the facts what to expect when you come here. It's not all plain sailing. Once you're on these boats and they're on their way, it's bouncing up and down. The chop, chop of the water gets worse as you head out of this bay. The swell increases, the wind increases. And as some of the captains or the, the tour guide joking, jokingly uh, say, you're paying, we're giving you the waves for free giving you a, a splash a splash ride for free and all jokes aside it is fun at times but at the end of the day when you're coming back the wind changes the wind gets cold your your main objective is to try and stay warm and get dry before you get back to the boat I mean before you get back to the to your van or your transport back to the hotel and sometimes you actually get more more soaked more wet than when you're in the water. See here, this is the, these are the boats that are moored to the floating jetty, and even there, it's not it's not really safe because the jetty's moving up and down, the boat's moving up and down, and if you get your timing wrong, you can get yourself into some trouble here as well. So let's just watch these guys for a while. down here at the beach you'll get hounded by these vendors there's there's hundreds of them similar to what it was like in Morocco before the closure everyone's just walking along the beach trying to offer you their their jewelry their pearls their silver necklaces waterproof bags if you're into that sort of stuff then okay but you can buy all that stuff out into in the stores probably at a cheaper price but after all you are supporting the community these guys are out here making a living so it's up to you really and when you're bartering with these guys I mean 
you've got to think to yourself, they're selling these bits of jewellery for like a dollar, two or three dollars. I really don't understand how some people want to barter. Two or three dollars out of your pocket isn't really going to, isn't really going to break the bank. I mean, you need to do some research, go around, have a look in the stores, you'll see what the prices are. And if you see they're trying to rip you off, then you can, you can make an offer to barter or just tell them, sorry, no thank you, and just move on. Alright, so it looks like most of the people have gone from this side over here. left just down the beach there but not many left there there are still a few over this way I might travel on down here and see if I can catch some of these guys getting on their boat see how much luck they have in boarding the boat successfully so let's move down there in three two I don't know if you can see that clearly, but you can see the waves coming in there on, on shore. The, the floating jetties getting pushed up and down quite quite a bit. And then you can see the boats going up and down at the same time. So when one's going up, the other one's going down, it's hard to step off and step on. We've got like a military boat coming in, coming in here. military vessel That's a military vessel. It doesn't have any military markings on it other than being painted grey. So I'm not sure what that is or who's on it. Let's have a look at these guys. waves coming in now, making it hard for these guys to get on.
This side of the jetty port seems a little bit calmer. Not as many waves for some reason. See these guys on the boat, a little bit easier for them to get in. But still, waist deep in water. And even over here, you'll see these guys.
trying to get in on this boat here. You can see where the bow is. It's about a metre above the jetty. Struggling to get the people in the boat just because it's, it's bobbing up and down. You can see the pier going up and down or the, the, the floating, floating jetty, floating pier. I don't know what you call these floating walkways. But um, you can see they're struggling to get someone up into the ship there. They've actually lifted him up completely. And in these situations, you don't want to be um, elderly. Because if something goes wrong and they drop you, or are going down. A big wave there. You can see that. Is that a wheelchair? Oh my god, that's a wheelchair. Someone's just uh, loaded up a wheelchair there. Never seen that here before. So we have a uh, disabled person taking one of these tools, doing good on him. Just because he's disabled and in a wheelchair doesn't mean he can't enjoy the beauty of El Nido. Everyone have a right to travel wherever they wherever they please. Whether you're in a wheelchair or not, you deserve what nature has to offer. So uh, hands thumbs up to that guy. I mean if that was me, if I was in a wheelchair, I probably wouldn't do it. Probably be sitting at home feeling sorry for myself. I wouldn't want to go anywhere, but I applaud that guy or lady or whoever that person was, I didn't see. But they're in a wheelchair and they're here in El Nido enjoying the sights. Alright guys, so the beach has been emptied, let me zoom out, no one left on the beach now, looks like everyone's on their boat. No one left here, so everyone's on their boat, but you can see clearly there's still a few boats left in the water, they're all empty. Like almost 20 boats here that are left on the on the on the uh, on the beach. So it's 10:30 uh, now. I've been here for just over an hour. The wind's picking up actually. I'm hiding behind this sort of shelter here, hoping that the wind's not going to affect the microphone. A couple of late stragglers heading out. Always, there's always one person or two people that are late, which delays the, the tour for everyone else. Same thing happened to us yesterday. We were waiting there for at least half an hour before three guests arrived. With uh, when we went to the hotel to pick them up, the guide said, "Oh, they're still sleeping. They're in. They're in. They're, they haven't woken up yet." So I think it might have been those same people that we had to wait for and yeah 
you're always going to get someone that's late, a bit lazy, and will delay your start to the journey. So, all right, I'm going to close this off here. I'm going to head on back to the hotel and see what the wife's up to. She's probably having a, having a, having a nap. So I'll see you on the other side.